It took motivation. But you know what's sad is that why do things in our life have to become so catastrophic for us to change our way of thinking? See, it's crazy. When life's good, we're just skating along. Everything's great, right? One bad thing happens, no matter how big or small. And for some reason, that's all we think about. It wipes out all the good in our lives. Hello everyone, this is Borna Kazarani from Melbourne, Australia. I hope you're doing fine. First of all, thank you so very much for all your lovely comments and messages regarding I'm a live show and please forgive me if I'm not able to reply you all. Today, I'm going to talk to Todd Special, who was born in New York in 1976. He's an entrepreneur, world-renowned speaker, Fortune 500 sales record-breaking sales trainer, best-selling author, uh, talent trappist and the first trainer and life coach to turn the story upside down. Author of international best-selling book, The Things I Do Know. He has empowered and taught thousands of people from numer numerous countries uh, through his audio, visual, social media and live trainings. Todd has created a top personal and professional development for a massive global audience who were overlooked and out for reach by similar programs with laser content and value. He has been honored by the Les Brown Institute as one of the top business coaches in the world and has made media franchise by appearing and speaking up against the system and implementing uh, disruptive uh, principles of the status quo. His humanitarian work includes active family adoptions throughout the holiday season, as well as programs, scholarships, and annual giving. Todd is a funder and CEO of uh, Oman Group Global, which houses more than 10 specialty industries, ranging from sales training, personal monitoring, import, export, and drop shipping technology, events, hostility, and more. If you want to find out more about Todd, you can go to uh, his website or check him out actually on uh, Instagram. Let me ask Todd to join me for a conversation. Hey. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? <laughs> Good, brother. How about yourself? Glad to be here. Glad to be here. I'm so happy and I'm very, very, um, I'm very happy that I'm having you here today also. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, um, I want to thank you very much for being here and I'm so happy to know you as a human being. Oh, and when I was reading your biography, uh, there were moments that I got tears in my eyes about what you've been through. Mm. And I'm so proud of who you are today, really. Uh, thank you so, so much, Marna. That means, uh, means a lot. You know, we go through these li life uh, challenges and they allow us to become something bigger or we let them defeat us. So 
I had to become something bigger, brother, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to those who are watching us now and later? Yes, of course. Listen, I, for everybody watching right now, I, I'm so thankful that you guys have joined us. Borna is an unbelievable person, and I feel honored to be on here. So I'm thankful for everybody watching, everybody who will watch later for sure. That's very sweet. I really appreciate that. I've got lots of questions for you, and I hope we can get through all of them. So sure. one of the things that I've noticed about you is you're a man not only with two hands, but with ten hands. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're um entrepreneur and you're a writer you're a renowned speaker and also you're still sales expert uh, and exclusive um consultant who are you <laughs> i was just a guy who grew up in the streets who had to uh sell to survive and and be uh become you know, I, I guess you could say learn how to become older at a very young age. You know, I had a lot of responsibilities and I had a lot of things that I had to take on at 15 years old, which forced me to be that way in sales world. And I never really thought of myself as a writer. Uh, I still don't, um, you know, because I, I put just what's up here on paper. And sometimes, you know, there's no self-deprecation here, but a lot of times, you know, we question, is it going to be good? Is anybody going to read it? You know, like there's a lot of grammatical errors in my book and everybody says, man, you messed up here. No, 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 no. There may be something misspelled and I'll fix that. But the way that I, that I wrote that book, I wanted people to feel as if I was speaking to them. So writing the book was a great thing. I uh, wrote a little sales guide over here right after that. And uh, I just, I think since I've transformed into believing that I can be the best version of me, I feel like I can do just about anything with the right guidance and the people surrounding me, so. Well, well done, because Todd, you're the best selling author of two books called The Things I Know and The Bathroom Guide for uh, clo Closers. Closers, yep, yep. Yeah. And today I want to talk about the first book that I've mentioned, The Things I Do Know. Talk to me about that book, actually, it sounds very interesting. Yeah, so The Things I Do Know was a book that I started to write. Um, I always used to say, I don't know everything, but these are the things that I do know. And that's how we got the title, because I think um, the reason why I've allowed myself to be in the position that I am is that I've removed the ego from growth. And when I was writing that book, there was a lot of words that I would use that were very important into my life. And those words in those books uh, were chapters that I wrote down where a specific word start or or uh, ego or you know gratification and a lot of different words I wrote in that book each chapter and I started writing the book and then um, you know I would procrastinate that should have been a, a, a very good chapter because <laughs> I procrastinate I'd write a chapter and I wouldn't do anything for like four or five months I'd write a chapter I wouldn't do anything for four or five months and then my dad is getting ready to pass away he's laying on his deathbed he's he's he makes me promise him two things get on stage and speak in front of people tell your story you went through too much as a kid uh and you know my my dad does is my hero in heaven and he said i want you to finish writing that book people need to know more about you they need to know about your story and they need to know those specific words he goes it couldn't be a better book son he goes because if you can tell people people know the definition of gratification they know the definition of start but those words defined in my life meant something completely different so I said, I'm going to write those words, I'll define those words, and I'm just going to put them in my terms. And that's what that book is. And it's a workbook to kind of show people. It doesn't tell my entire story, but it tells uh, bits and pieces of what I went through and how important um, those words were to me in my life. And then I added a little workbook to help people kind of uh, guide them through their tough times. And hopefully it will do that. Okay. All right. So there are lots of questions actually through that I hope we get a chance to go through them. So Sure. As you mentioned, so as I know, you've been through a lot in your life. And you, as the top Fortune 500 sales trainer, you've uh, smashed through training, selling in major corporations like Hilton, Westgate, and more. However, there is a paragraph in your biography which drew my attention, and it says, shattering limitations must would not predict its accomplishment from someone with a uh, tumultuous uh, upbringing, gambling houses and pool halls mm -hmm. on the wrong side of the track as his training grants. Who is this person and where <laughs> is this person today? 
<laughs> He's still there. Um, you know, it was funny that you asked that, Borna, because, you know, when I started training in the sales industry, I didn't realize it till later in life, but it was in the gambling halls. It was in pool halls. It was in poker rooms. It was in that so the, those type of atmospheres because there's hustlers, right? There's people that are gambling for a living. They're making money by, you know, setting up games and negotiating uh, a very good terms game so they can win or they're you know they're playing the their I had to study the math behind cribbage and pinochle and tonk and all these card games that are just gambling games not sure if you're aware of any of them but there's a lot of things that are just like card games but the difference is too is that at a very young age I had to realize the importance and value of money so when I started doing that, I started realizing the math and the geometry and all the angles that you can learn in a hustler's mentality from the street. And what I did was I just bridged the gap between the street and corporate life because there was a, there was a big gap there. A lot of people think you need that, you know, Harvard uh, degree to be in the business world. Well, it helps. Don't get me wrong. Education's important. But let me tell you something. I cannot tell you how many times I've run circles around people that have gone to Harvard's and Yale's on the sales floor and earnings because of what I learned in the streets. And I call it my, my, my street university. <laughs> okay. well, so I had to bridge that gap and that's how I did it. That's very interesting. And I want to talk to, I want you to talk more about the moment that you started thinking, all right, enough is enough mm. and I need a change. How did it happen? What now happened? from the gambling world into the corporate world? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually a funny story. <laughs> so I was running a poker game, uh, illegal poker game for a while. And then that's how I was making my living for about uh, 10 to 12 years. And um, this guy who was in the timeshare business was the sales guy. And he says, man, you need to get out of the poker. You're, you're a business guy. You run this gambling house. Like it's a business. You're a business person. You need to be in the business world. You need to, you need to step out. And he'd asked me that for about two and a half, three years. So we get, we get in a hand together and he looks at me and he goes, Hey Todd, he goes, uh, got a good hand. I was like, yeah, he goes, what if, if I win this hand, okay, you have to quit poker and go get your real estate license and, and go start selling timeshare in the corporate world. And I said, vice versa. Okay. If I win this hand, <laughs> I don't want to hear shit about the timeshare business ever again. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything about it. Right. So uh, when someone asked me, they said, Todd, you know, you grew up in the gambling world in the poker scene. What's the most money you've ever won in one hand? And I say, it's the day that I lost $2,600. And they go, no, 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 no. We want to know the, 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 the money that you won the most of. And I go, yeah, the day that I lost $2,600 because I lost $2,600 in that hand. Oh, but my. that day when I lost the hand, I made a bet. I honored that bet. I quit running poker games, went to go get my real estate license. In my first year, I made about two and a half times what I was making in the poker world on the streets and broke records in a brand new environment the first 10 months that I was there. So it was, it was a massive turnaround. But what also added to that, and, and I believe that God has his will, but I'm driving my, my, an old Ford F-150 truck at the time, and I'm driving my two daughters, which I was a single dad for many years, uh, and I'm driving them to, uh, to school and my daughters look at me and go, Hey dad, dad, listen, um, we have career day at school and we want you to come in and tell everybody what you do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm running an illegal poker game and I'm going, well, see, here's the thing, girls. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Lorna, if I can be honest, it was a crucial turning point in my life because for me, I was thinking to myself, do I want my girls growing up saying, my father ran illegal card games for a living. Do I want that? And I was like, no, I don't want that. My daughters deserve more than that. So that's when I kind of pivoted and I said, you know what, enough's enough. And I got in the corporate world and, uh, and we started growing rapidly and I started finding the love for helping people and, and for training, you know, and kind of taking a lot of that street hustle um, and that salesmanship in the streets. And I, and I, you know, bridged that gap into the corporate world and it helped me excel at a very fast pace. So. Todd, yeah, that's very understandable. Unfortunately, it's quite like a bitter experiences that you've been through. And, um, you know, we've spoken before and I shared a little bit of my story with you. So both of us have been through a lot in our lives. So, uh, but the time of thriving in my life came at the time 
when I reached a stage in my life when I had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And since then, I became extremely strong and nothing could really destroy me. So I'm wondering when was it that you started seeing life differently and getting back on your feet again? Yeah, so um, I was, uh, as, I, as I was explaining earlier, when I, when I started the poker world, I was in the poker world for a very long time. Okay. And I was robbed at gunpoint several times and, uh, you know, guns up the side of my head. I was, I was doing steroids and I was bigger and I was red and I was mean and I was a fighter. And, you know, and uh, when the guy put the gun to my head, he said, Todd, we know who you are. If you move, you're going to die tonight. You know what I mean? That's what I hear in my head and uh, er, him whispering in my ear. And I got robbed uh, the third time. And the third time we got robbed, the poker games just kind of ended. Okay, this was the first go around. They kind of just, and it was my only form of income at the time as a single father. And my mother, my brother, and his wife helped me out a lot with uh, my daughters as I, as I was going through that tough time. And it was because when you're running a poker game, you have a credit uh, where you give people credit, right? Like if you came, Borny Satata, need 5,000 until next week, I said, no problem. I give you, we write it on a credit book. And we ran, that's called a book, right? So you have a book where you give people credit that are good for the money. So I was lending people, you know, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 at a time. And as I'm lending this money, um, I get robbed at gunpoint and my game ends and I go broke. Now, the same people that I was lending two, three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to wouldn't give me a hundred bucks because they yeah. knew I had no chance to pay them back. I had no other form of income. And at the time, I didn't know it but it was probably uh, one of the most struggling times I've ever had in my life because as my daughters would come over and they would be with, like say they were at my mother, uh, father, mother, father's house or my brothers and his wife's and they would come over. I was very depressed when the card games went, went bad. And as those card games went bad, I, w I was, you know, going through my money and was just, and just, it just kept dwindling, dwindling until pretty much I had nothing left. And I had this trash can that was next to my bed and I used to reach in that trash can and I would pull out a handful of change. And as my daughters and I would, my daughters would come over, we'd walk to McDonald's or walk to Taco Bell. And, and that's where, that's where we would eat with the change in the, in the, in the trash can, you know? So I remember them coming over one day and uh, I, I had, I was completely drunk uh, the night before. And, uh, and my, I had a roommate there. His name was Alex. He's just a, an amazing dude. And uh, my daughters came over in the morning, like, daddy, we want to play with you. But my oldest daughter, even at the time, was like, you know, hey, daddy, it's okay if you want to rest because she's looking at me and I'm just sad as can be. I'm depressed. She's smart. She was, she's always smart, even smart, smarter now. She was smart back then. She was, dad, if you want to sleep, it's okay. So me, because I was drunk the night before, I fall asleep and I wake up like seven hours later, had spent no time with my daughters and they were pretty young at the time. And my roommate had taken them out to go get this sand and in the kitchen, they were playing with sand. They were laughing, giggling, and having a good time. Here I was, drunk and depressed. And, and you know, the turning point came that evening. As they left, you know, my daughter texts me, and she says, Daddy, um, do you want us to come over anymore? And I was like, well, Abe, what do you mean? Like, well, you know, Daddy, we want, we want to make sure that, that you want us there because if you're too tired for us, we understand. She's trying to be so nice, right? I get emotional even talking about it now. I said, Avery, what do you mean? Of course I want you to come over. I want you and Addison here, of course, no matter what. She says, okay, daddy, because you know we just want you to play with us, but if you're too tired, you need to rest. So nevertheless, before I get too emotional, that she, she goes back. Um, I get wasted drunk again that night because I, I believe I'm the worst father on the planet. Um, how, do, how do I lose that valuable time with my daughters? And that time that I said enough, enough uh, was enough was that evening. Um, I'm, I'm drunk as can be. It starts pouring rain out. I got no money. I can't even afford to buy my kids a 99 cent cheeseburger when they come over to see me. Um, I have no poker game. I'm too, de too depressed. My mind's messed up to, to go out and get a job because I've been running a legal card game making 5,000 US dollars a week cash for the past 10 years. You know, I wasn't good with my money. Bought a Range Rover cash, just wasted it because I thought the money's always going to be there. It's always going to come in. And um, so I was real drunk that night. I get up and uh, I'm laying in bed and, and, and I'm just like, man, and, and, and again, mind you, this is after probably about two or three weeks of me sitting in a black room, completely blacked out the windows. So, and it was, it was just depressing. 
it was a small 10 by 10 boxed room where I would watch TV or play video games all day long and cry 10 to 12 hours a day because I was so depressed that I just thought I was a bad father, et cetera. So I get up, run outside, I'm running around the house, full circles, uh, it's raining out, I'm crying, I'm screaming, God, why me? Why me? You know, like, like why, why are you doing this to me? Why, are, why, I mean, what did I do that's so bad that you're, this is my life? And it's funny because, you know, when we pray, we pray when we need something, right? And I'm not, and, and, and that's not the right thing I'm learning. <laughs> it's like, hey, God, uh, can, can you help me out here? Like, you know, but if it's, if, it, and, I, and I didn't have gratitude for what I already have in my life. And I'm learning that every day still to this day. But that night I'm running full speed around. And as cliche as it sounds, by the time I got back to the front door, I went from why, uh, why me to try me. My mindset completely changed. I was like, and I went inside, there was a picture next to my bed of my two daughters and I'm holding it close to my chest and I'm crying my eyes out and I'm squeezing this picture and I'm saying, this is not the life that daddy promised you. This is not the life that I promised you. And that night I went to bed, I got up the next morning, went to work for a company called Labor Ready, laying bricks just to earn some money. And then uh, I went to do some more manual labor and more manual labor until the guy that used to run the labor ready place asked me, Hey, do you want to be a, in sales? You're a good people person. I was like, yeah, for sure. Let's give it a shot. Started selling poker games, started, uh, started running again, local areas. No, no, this is the thing. And I actually went back because I started dealing these card games and I was making another four to $6,000 a week. I quit the sales job again. And that's when I get into when I got robbed again. And I went into that guy and, and I made that bet that I lost that hand. That's when I got into timeshare full first and never looked back into poker ever again. Um, but that was the full circle, right? Because my, my, my turning point when I said enough is enough was looking at my daughters in their eyes and saying, your time matters, right? Because my, if my daughter, Borna, my daughter's asking me, do you have time for us? Like, that, that, that's the worst question any father would ever want to hear from any child. You know what I mean? So it was a massive turning point in my life where I said, you know what? This isn't the life that I promised them. I was crying, holding that picture close to my, to my uh, chest. And then I, I never looked back. Born. I never, ever, I got, I, I pulled myself out of depression. Uh, I put myself in a, in a winning solution. I, I, I stopped um, complaining about the things that were in going wrong in my life. And I started being grateful for the things that were actually in my life. And once I started being grateful and praying consistently, not when I need something, but for, for being thankful for what I have, that's when my life really started changing. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. Actually, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. That was right on. So, well, well done. And I'm Thank I'm you. proud of you, and I'm sure you're proud of yourself. Thank and you. Daughters are also. So my next question actually is very relevant to um, you. Okay, let me read it. You provided assistance to thousands of people uh, in need throughout Florida, nation, and world, um, led by help others who can't give you anything in return. Mm -hmm. I do love uh, this mindset. And how did you come to this mentality and conclusion? Yeah, so when I started getting in this in the sales world and uh, coaching people, and I was training, um, I I started realizing, and in, in, in a very fast pace, that mm -hmm. how to make me feel good was to help other people. Like if Borna came into the timeshare world, the sales world, and said, "Todd, I want to be good at sales," and I said, "You know what, Borna, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to help you be good at sales." I was already doing the job. I was already a leader at that Fortune 500 company that I was working in at the time. And I took it upon myself to start training people that weren't even on my team, that worked for other managers, that worked for other people, because I wanted the track as a whole. I wanted the whole company to, to rise and, uh, and be a part of that. And a lot of people kept asking me, said, man, why are you helping that person? They're, they're never going to do anything for you. And they're just taking your information. And I said, because I have to believe in the better good. And what I mean by that is that if I don't help people to get anything in return, when I want to help you, I'm going to help you right now. Now to the coaching world, you know, there are people that pay me a whole hell of a lot of money to coach them. And I remember when I said to somebody the other day, they said, they said, Todd, when did you change from 
you know, uh, uh, doing free trainings into, into this is what your livelihood is. And one of my mentors told me this a long time ago. Um, she says, Todd, you can help way more people with money <laughs> than you can without. <laughs> and it's very true. It's very true. You know, we, we reach the masses, we reach more people. And for me to do what I love, I have bills just like everybody else. I have a life that I want to live. And, um, but my slogan has always been put the people before the paycheck, because when I help people and I, I see them win, I, I always, always get emotional about it because I'm a crier. I'm an Italian Irish guy. I always tell people I'll fight everybody in the room, but I'll cry while I'm doing it. <laughs> Which is good. Crying. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I want to change the atmosphere. So it was like back to back um, questions and yes. I'm trying to digest it because um, you <laughs> Very, very like um, interesting stories. I want you to give us a tour. Where are yeah. you? Camera and show. Sure. I love that. Well, I'm in my studio. There we go. Okay, so there is an option on the camera. You can reverse the camera and get up and direct whatever. Yep, it is. yep. I'm going to take it out of here real quick. Hang on here. I'll do this. So, this is my studio here. So I have all my backdrops for photography. There's a green screen. So if I want to be in Hawaii, I just go to Hawaii. And uh, all my lighting is here. My beautiful daughters. We've got a bunch of TVs in here. This is my studio. So we've got your lighting. You've got your cameras. This is where I do my podcast right here at the desk. We've got the TVs up here and some great book reads here. If you guys haven't read these, you should. Crushing It by Gary Vee is a great book. One of the best in the world, Grant Cardone. That's a good book you should read right there. <laughs> Then there's a bathroom guide for closers. Okay, B back to that book. Uh, back to yeah. Where can people find this book? W what's the link? Where's the link? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you the link. Uh, it's it's let's make sales great again dot com. But I'm gonna I'll put the links uh, uh in the uh well actually can we can we just put it in here afterwards? But I'll tell them exactly where to go if they want to get the book. But they can go to my website toddspecial.com just toddspecial.com and they can just get all the links from there. So, but uh, yeah, these are some of the books that I love reading here. Obviously this one I've read about 10, 20 times, <laughs> Think and Grow Rich. It is uh, by Napoleon Hill, one of the best ever. So these are my lav mics that I wear here. This is just my kind of little uh, station I have down here, your drone and you've got your Mevo cameras. And then this, is where I do all my recording. So this is my studio here. So I've got wires that go right through the wall here. I recorded my audio books in here. So that, that's it. So, but uh, I, this is my studio on the side of my house. You're doing very fast. You're doing very fast. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go back. You need to just a little bit slowly that let's see what-, what You got what, it. So this is, this is where I did all, all my uh, audio books I've done here. I, I also do, a little singing so i like and i enjoy that <laughs> I know. Yeah. but yeah so we built this and then uh like i said as far as the studio is concerned this is just the background to my podcast that i do here for gut check so it's pretty cool so i can put videos of myself up there i can put pictures or advertisements for other companies and then obviously you got to make sure you have the lighting then you have your drop panels here in the ceiling so the sound because they're 20 foot foot vaulted ceilings So I had to have drop panels so you don't hear the echo, you know what I mean, in the room. So, but this is it, Morna. This is my uh, my getaway in my office all in one. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what I hope to have it actually one day. And I'm really glad that you've got it. It's, it's amazing. Well uh, done. Well done. And thank you very much for the tour. I really appreciate it. So there are lots of questions and I will go through it. If, uh, well, Lots of people complaining about why I turn off the comments because I want to have a really fun conversation with my guests. And if I sure. turn it on, so the questions comes like, yeah, go for sure, for sure. And, uh, you can <laughs> watch later. and if you have any question, I'm more than happy to read it for Todd. There are lots of questions if we get a chance to go trade. So, yes. um, how should people like you who are experienced in life be worried that they will not make the same mistakes they did in the past? Well, I believe that self-awareness can be the most important thing in, in this regard. What do you think? Uh, sorry, so refer, say the question again. Right, sorry, yes. Um, 
how should people like you who experience in life a lot, who've been through a lot, be aware that they won't make the same mistakes they mm. did in the mm. past? Yeah. Well, I, I believe the self-awareness can be the most important thing in this regard. But I want to hear from you. What do you think? What's yeah, your no, I, I actually agree with you. Um, for me, you know, I ha you have to make a conscious de decision right away. And the only way that comes is to build habits that are going to keep you on track. See, I, it, there's a lot of, like on my sales course, okay? My sales course, it's let's make sales great again .com. My sales course, a lot of people are selling me like these. I have powerhouse salespeople taking my sales course. And, and, and some of them come up and say, man, I don't, you know, how do you do, how do you be a consistently winning salesperson? And I said, it's simple. You have to have be habit based first. I've got to set you up up here in order to be good at sales first. I can teach you all the sales tactics in the world. I can teach you how to sell anybody. That doesn't mean you're going to be good at sales. You have to follow a daily habit and daily routine to keep you consistently rising like this. So you don't make that pitfall. You don't have that. You don't make that mistake. Well, that's the same thing in life for me. You know, my mentor, Danelle Delgado, you know, we we're talking and, and uh, she got me writing uh, 10 things every day, 10 gratitudes that I'm grateful for, three goals for the day that, I'm, that I can achieve in that day, not for five years from now or next month, but three goals for that day. And I add a little twist to it. At the end of the night, I want to write down one, at least one good thing that, was, that happened to me that day, no matter how bad the day was. Like when my dad passed away, I had to find something good to write down in my journal. So, you know, to, in order to follow and stay consistent and not have those slumps and to call and kind of fall back into the, in the old habits, if you will, is to create new habits and have someone there to hold you accountable to make sure that you don't drop off. Because if you follow those same habits and those same tools every day, you'll continue to rise and you will not fall again. Absolutely. Very good explanation. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank you. So this is my last question. Um, I don't know if you watched the movie about self-love that I made it. So I've sent it to you on WhatsApp. Yeah. So, all right. I would like to hear about your impression about self-love. I want to, I want you to talk to me about this, this concept. Yeah. Self-love. It's, um, it's, it's, so to me, there, there's a tough, it's a tough explanation. It was a tough explanation for me when I first started uh, succeeding at a higher level because the hardest thing for me to do is to have is to I was having a hard time distinguishing the difference between ego and arrogance and self-love ah uh, okay yeah. yeah there's a massive difference between them of course but I'm thinking to myself man if, if I tell people how good I'm like I'm the best at sales training this is what I, I believe I'm the best that guy Grant Cardone amazing I'll go up against Grant all day long. I feel it because that's confidence in me, okay? But, but self-love to me has nothing to do with ego and arrogance or confidence. Self-love to me is just being purely happy about who you are at any given time. And I was having a really hard time understanding the concept because here's the problem. If you're not truly happy inside, you cannot make others truly happy. You have to feel happy first. And no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what you do in life. And I had a really hard time accepting all the mistakes that I've made in the past to, to the point where, to be honest with you, uh, Vaughn, I just added it to my YouTube page. Um, I did a vulnerability live. It was on vulnerability. And I told people and I told stuff on that live that my mother didn't even know that was bad, like stealing $20 bills out of her purse as a kid when we were broke and I didn't know how important that $20 was, you know, or taking my dad's ring and pawning it, you know, just to have cash, just to be a cool kid. I mean, I stole from my parents, you know what I mean, at a very young age because all the peer pressure just to be a cool kid, you know, and I had to realize that people are going to judge you no matter who you are, whether you're the Pope, whether you're a saint, <laughs> they're going to judge you, it doesn't matter, right? Yes. So. I, my self love came from the moment that I freed myself from the jail that I was living in, that I put myself in trying to hide the mistakes that I've made in the past. Once I released those mistakes, man, all the self love in the world came out and I knew, and then that's when I finally knew there was a difference between self love and arrogance and ego. Wow. <laughs> very, very interesting and a great. Todd, <laughs> it was 
so so lovely talking to you here on a live show i really appreciate it thank you very much for accepting having conversation conversation did you like our conversation of course i did and i gotta tell you uh be, before we go off you've got to be one of the most genuinely nice people and talented individuals that i've met in a very long time and i mean that because you are you do have the self-love that a lot of people don't have and i know a little bit about your story and as crazy and tough as that was i'm also very proud of you and who you are because without people like you uh, i i feel like our world would be a much worse place so thank you for what you're doing and the platform that you're building i want you to continue to do what you do in 58 different languages <laughs> and help people rise because you're, you're just, that laugh is contagious. You're a genuine human being. And if there's anything I ever need for you, uh, uh, if anything you ever need from me, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm a huge fan. I really appreciate that. Thank you so very much. So you're very welcome. Blushing now. I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. You're very and welcome. I'm more than happy to do advertise your things on story, on my story, and please let me know. And I love what you're doing. I'm so proud of you. Uh, thank you so much. Sincerely. Yeah, we see each other, meet each other, uh, one in reality. <laughs> oh, we will. I, I'm, I don't know if it's this year, in August or September this year, but my goal is to be in Australia by next year. So we'll make it work. Don't worry about it. All right? Perfect. We'll meet in person. All right? Perfect. Certainly. All right. All right. You take care. Be well. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much for watching us. I had a great, amazing conversation with Todd Special. If you want to find out more about Todd, you can go to his page and find out actually who I was talking to. Thank you. And please forgive me um, because I didn't get a chance to go to your questions. Be well. Keep your smile. Bye.